in a violent fashion. But for the most part, instead of trying to contain these people, we'd probably be, be better served by trying to work with them, not against them. All right. Now, I agree with you that it's good to have the carrot and the stick. But I would like to see martial law imposed on Iraq for at least a month. And I don't think that's unreasonable to, you know, oh, put order right. down, get services back. I think the law-abiding people of Iraq would want that. Curfews. The reality is they're going to be empowered by their own people. And therefore, we need to find those who we can work with. The most powerful of, among those religious leaders are the ones who are going to set out the laws that people are going to follow. All right, but we can't tolerate a Muslim fundamentalist state in this country. Let's be honest. This is a time for America to demand changes in Damascus before a visit is even considered. The visit should be a reward for public change, not an appeal to a weak, economically depressed dictatorship. Now, Ken, you've heard about talking about offering the carrot and the stick. Just a week ago, we were giving Syria the stick. So why a week later are we already offering them the carrot to this thug dictator? Ability stop in order to get the people to tell us where this is. Like you said, Judith Miller the other day, you know, talked about this scientist she didn't name, but he said, look, you need to dig here, you need to go over right. and look over here. He, she started to lay out those well, details. Look, Hundreds Colonel, of those people are going to come forward. Colonel. If weapons of mass destruction aren't found, your reputation, my reputation, because I'll have to apologize, because I bought into it. I bought into it. And out of a scale of 1 to 10, 10 is the best. How certain are you that we're going to find these weapons of mass destruction? There's a 10 there, Bill. We All right. So you're, 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 um, you're saying for sure it's going to happen. Now. Yeah, and we may not find it tomorrow, but it's no, going to take a little while. No, it doesn't matter we when we find, find them as long as we find them. Now. You're right. Doctor. Every Fox News analyst that I, everyone, and these guys have been right down the line, doctor. If you watch our channel, we've been right, and all of the others have been wrong, okay? They all say the same thing the colonel says. Everyone. You know, uh, my wish is uh, that we find some weapons. I really do, because I think this is necessary for us. I think the United States need to restore its credibility. The, this administration need to do so. But I'd like to see the, the administration also take some steps in that direction. For example, why aren't we inviting the international inspectors to I'll come I'll tell you back? why. Because we don't want to give them the authority. And the moment when I saw all these things destructed, that was the worst moment in my life. Now, dealing with the cultural casualties of this war is now high on the U.S. agenda. Evidence of that today, General Garner's visit to the Iraqi National Museum. General Garner, of course, in charge of the reconstruction of this country. The looting goes down every day, and I think you'll continue to see it go down because the Iraqis are now stepping up and controlling the problem for themselves. Coming across uh, 51 MiG fighter jets. Uh, some of them were actually buried. Others, as you can see, were covered in cami netting. Now, it's not clear right now if they're operational. We understand some mechanics are going in there to take a look at uh, to take a look at this there was also a, a small arms cache found it is an ongoing operation you can see the special uh, forces uh, covering their faces uh, so it is an ongoing operation we'll probably hear some more on Sunday when the Pope has his big mass in st. Peter's Square and then also the blessing to the city of Rome and to the entire world in so many different languages we'll also probably hear some more about Iraq and about war now one final point the reason um, we're here today in front of the Colosseum and not in front of St. Peter's as usual is because later tonight is really what's the main event, let's say, for Good Friday, which is the Way of the Cross. Uh, the Pope mentions that he's never missed that appointment in the 24 years and now almost 25 that he's been Pope. He used to carry the cross himself, but because of health reasons, he hasn't been able to do that. Now I'm the Coalition Forces Land Component Command, Public Affairs non-commissioned officer in charge, which allows me to do a number of things. I get an opportunity to, to go out and photograph soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines from all aspects of the operation. Footage of Saddam Hussein, which purportedly was shot in a northern Baghdad neighborhood April 9th, the same day his regime seemed to have vanished. The network also released an audio recording of what is believed to be Saddam Hussein. Another. Well, if you believe your eyes and your ears and Abu Dhabi TV, Saddam Hussein was walking and talking the very day his statue was toppled in Baghdad. Good afternoon. I'm Anderson Cooper sitting in today for Wolf Blitzer in the CNN newsroom in Atlanta. Saddam Hussein's fate and whereabouts today still a mystery, but it now appears at the very least possible the Iraqi dictator was alive and well and just blocks away from where furious protesters were 
pulling down his likeness in a Baghdad square. Our man in Baghdad is Jim Clancy. Uh, Jim, has a look from there? Well, Anderson, there's conflicting reports about that videotape, but one thing uh, seems clear. It was released to show the Iraqi leader on the streets of Baghdad's not only with his armed supporters, but also with his son, uh, Kuse, who had been ordered to help defend the city of Baghdad itself. Uh, he, uh, what purports to be uh, President Saddam Hussein on the 9th of April there, the same time that uh, just miles away, his statue was coming down in a square. This would seem to rally the hopes of those who supported the president at the same time strike fear, perhaps, in the hearts of those that thought he was already dead, already gone. It is very difficult to tell from what uh, you see on this video what the time, what the date was when it was taken. We have talked with some of the residents of the Azamiya neighborhood, and they have told us conflicting stories. Some say, yes, it was about that time. Others say, no, it was a couple of days after the war started. One man suggested it w he was here, but it wasn't Saddam Hussein at all. It was one of his doubles. So you can take your pick from people's views of all of this. I think that uh, what it says more than anything is that someone associated with President Saddam Hussein, after he is gone, still wants his image out there, still wants to show him defiant, still wants to show him as a potential threat. And Dobby TV man, is also playing a 10-minute audio tape of Saddam in which he says, quote, conquered people are the ones who eventually triumph over invaders. Intelligence experts say that's significant because the voice in the tape seems to acknowledge the downfall of the Iraqi regime. It is, experts say, what amounts to a farewell speech. Uh, the audio tape was uh, almost fatalistic. It was like he understood that he was no longer in command and he was simply sending the message to his followers that he understood and was extorting them to keep the faith. Well, first of all, is it Saddam Hussein? But uh, on the assumption that it is, the question really is when was it recorded? Uh, now, this one was released with the statement that it was on April 9th. Uh, and, of course, there was an audio tape released as well, uh, Saddam Hussein's voice, at least purportedly his. That analysis will be done soon, and we'll know whether it's his voice or not pretty definitively. Uh, the, nothing on the audio tape, uh, no reference to any incidents or events that would allow anyone to say for sure whether or not uh, it had to have been recorded after a specific date. The uh, CIA people will be looking at this tape, looking at the buildings, looking at any signs of damage trying to figure out if there's anything that helps them know that it has to, has to have been recorded after a specific date. Now, they've done that kind of analysis with the earlier tape, the tape that purported to be, put, to be uh, Saddam Hussein on the streets, this one here, that purported to be him on April 4th. And the conclusion of U.S. intelligence analysts looking at this tape is that uh, it is not on April 4th, that that is not true, that this tape was recorded, in fact, most likely in the first week of March. And they say that based on the fact that if you look at the background at certain buildings and other uh, other elements in the picture there are things that these officials say changed and we're uh, we're not looking the way they look in these pictures by the time you got to april fourth now there is smoke in the background but officials say that the uh, oil trenches that the iraqis lit to um, to uh, in, as part of an attempt to uh, uh, confuse u.s. targeting were some of them were already lit by the time by, by the first week of March. So uh, the, the working assumption of U.S. intelligence now is that the pictures you're looking at right now were, were taken in the first, of, first week of March, not April 4th, as claimed. So you again have to deal with the claim that this other tape that's come out today is, is April 9th, and I think uh, U.S. intelligence analysts are going to look at that claim rather skeptically. Thought they had pretty good intelligence that he may have been at that location, so uh, he would clearly have survived that hit if this is indeed April 9th. Now, obviously, supporters of Saddam Hussein will want the world to believe that he survived that strike. Syria's dictator played with fire. Now he may get burned by a bunker-busting JDAM. The New York Times seems to care more about pottery than liberty. The so-called peace movement cares more about bashing Bush than Sodom's torture chambers. And the Arab press apparently doesn't care about truth at all. Neocons are big winners. Jewish conspiracy theorists, losers. The American GI, winner. The Republican Guard, losers. And then there's Hollywood. So let me drink the water. Yeah.
Yes, these same great minds that brought us Ishtar also produced these self-righteous randings. A chill wind is blowing in this nation. I would never give this administration any sign of approval. We are doomed if we go into this war, into the heart of the Arabian world, with a U.S.-led effort against world opinion. We are doomed if we do this. Sorry, Janine, the only one who's doomed is Sodom and his bath party brutes. Kim Jong-il is quaking, Arafat is fading, and Castro is playing with fire. You will act to restrain the violent and defend the cause of peace. And by acting, we will signal to outlaw regimes that in this new century, the boundaries of civilized behavior will be respected. So what exactly is war good for? Just ask the people of Iraq. Bye bye, say again. Hundreds of thousands of Shiite Muslims are streaming into Karbala to pay homage at the shrine of a revered Muslim martyr. Under Saddam Hussein, the annual gathering was severely curtailed, small numbers travelling only in buses and trucks. Now, for the first time in decades, these pilgrims are free to fulfil ancient tradition and come on foot. Flocking from all corners of the country, walking for days, covering hundreds of miles. They're bringing a message for the coalition forces. It's quite simple. Thanks for ridding Iraq of Saddam, now go home. The downtrodden Shiite Muslim majority wants to determine its own political future. Carrying placards and chanting for Islamic law in Iraq, they call too for unity with all Muslims across sectarian divides. US soldiers based nearby have stayed off the streets, occasionally observing proceedings from helicopters. Coalition sources say plans are still on track to play a key role in establishing an interim government to run the country. But top Shiite clerics say they will not accept a hand-picked leader imposed by the United States and Britain. Those same clerics shy away from claiming political office for themselves, but they vow to take a lead hand in shaping the new Iraq. Syria is developing chemical weapons of mass destruction. Syria is getting weapons to Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Syria runs a police state modeled very much like uh, the Saddam Ba'athist regime in Iraq. And yet the State Department apparently advised the secretary that it would be a good idea for him to go and visit the dictator in Syria. Now, wait a minute now. The State Department advises the secretary? I mean, when sure. does the secretary call the shots here? He's in charge. Well, I mean, well, I, think, I think from what I know of Powell, um, number one, you can't criticize him. He's a sacred cow. He's the one guy in Washington that both um, parties don't want to go near as far as criticism. All right? I think that's true. Number two, his policy whether you like it or not, is policy of engagement. All right? He believes that you get further by meeting face-to-face -face with uh, Bashir over in Syria, you know, all these guys. The other side says, hold it. Unless they behave and clean up the rack, we're not going to give them the dignity of a meeting and lend our power to them. So I think you're coming down on the latter side. But I, you're giving Powell a pass, and I think Powell is the architect of a lot of this philosophy. Visited Damascus over 20 times. This is Christopher, right? Christopher. On one occasion, landed his airplane at the airport, the dictator wouldn't see him, and after four humiliating hours, he flew off without even having a meeting. Now, the same people and the same culture that advised Warren Christopher are, and advised uh, Madeleine Albright are advising Secretary Powell. Yeah, but I think, look, I think, people advise me all the time, and in the Speaker of the House, they advise you all the time. No, but there's a we huge make our own bill. policy. No, 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 look. If, if somebody gave you consistently bad advice, you'd fire them. In the State Department, they get to be ambassadors. Well, uh, yeah, but I'd the make them ambassador totally to Tonga different. and ship them out. I'm <laughs> not buying this. It ain't Powell's fault. Uh, first of all, I don't know whether your argument is, is right or not, but I, I kind of sympathize with what you're saying. I think it was diplomacy was a mess uh, before the Iraq situation, but I'm not giving Powell a pass on it. Now, why do you think the Bush administration comes out and says, oh, no, they're doing an excellent well, job? Th this is a president who's a team leader. He believes in his team. Uh, he's going to automatically defend his team. I, re I respect that. I understand that's how he operates. Bureaucracy. But let me give you a second example. There's all this yelling about transparency in American contracts in Iraq. Do you realize that the U.N. Oil for Food program, which is a multi-billion dollar, 12-year program, has zero accountability, zero sure. transparency? They stole billions of dollars, and it went to uh, the U.N. people who, you know, do whatever they want. Everybody.